Well hey everyone, how's it going? It's Metal, and welcome back to the channel. So, I review horror all year, every year. So it comes as no surprise that I've been wanting to review at least one horror film on the month of October, which is Halloween today. It's the 31st, we're all wearing our really cool costumes, going trick-or-treating, all of this fun and exciting things that we love to do on this wonderful holiday, and I love it. I love every single second of it, and it's a great time to have good scares, it's a great time to just have a great time all around. Rather than talk about all of the various different franchises of horror, like Halloween, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, and as well as Child's Play, Chucky, and various other ones like uh, Le Leprechaun, or the more cliched ones that uh, like everyone talks about over and over and over again. Those are the kind of horror franchises that gets talked about in discussion way too often, way too much. Whenever horror comes into the discussion, it's always one of those franchises. And I kind of want to change it up a bit for today in this review. And it's gonna be for a horror film that I think is pretty good, actually. It's a Stuart Gordon film, and I'm gonna bring it out right here. Yeah, so this is a Stuart Gordon film uh, called Castle Freak. Yeah, so this is a Stuart Gordon film called Castle Freak. It's by the same director of Reanimator and From Beyond and Dolls. This is actually a, a pretty good a Stuart Gordon film, not one of his best but it is a pretty good one and it's worth talking about. So let's get right into it, guys. So Castle Freak tells the story of a family that is trying to get over their loss of their five-year-old son. So they inherit this old abandoned creepy castle that unknowingly has this freakish monster that is locked away down in a basement with chains wrapped all around his body and no one knows anything about this. It's uh, very apparent that uh, Stuart Gordon really loved working with Je uh, Jeffrey Cobbs and uh, Barbara Crampton. I think they work phenomenal together ever since Reanimator. Stuart Gordon wanted to continue directing films with those two actors and actresses. I think they are done wonderfully in Reanimator, and they do pretty good here too. I thought this movie was fairly what. Decent. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think it is pretty good though. Like a lot of the uh, scenes involve that creepy freak monster thing that's in the uh, basement that just gives me the chills every time I see him. Stuart Gordon's direction with this movie I thought was well done. Rest in peace Stuart Gordon. You were a phenomenal horror director. Uh, one of the best out there. This will have your legacy live on, man. I mean, you were amazing. Yeah, all my condolences go out to you, buddy. I do think that Barbara Crampton's character, I think she just goes a little bit too far. It's with the husband in the movie. Uh, I think it's the Rowley family, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Barbara Crampton's character, Suzanne, and uh, Jeffrey Cobb's character, John, uh, they're both husband and wife in this movie, and they're kind of like, kind of dysfunctional because they're not really talking to each other that much, so they're a little bit dysfunctional, and they're trying to get over the loss of their, you know, of their five-year-old son due to uh, John's drunk driving. Um, it's pretty understandable, actually, and it does make sense on why Suzanne is completely very upset with John and, and all of his, you know, big decision, terrible decision-making that he has done with the drunk driving and everything while his, like, when both of his kids were in the vehicle. I mean, it's really irresponsible. I do understand that, but just going to this extent, I just thought was just going a little bit too far, I think. You know, uh, you didn't have to go that hard on the guy. I, I'm speaking to the character here, not, not Barbara Crampton. Bar Bar Barbara Crampton was doing a phenomenal job with this character, I thought. Uh, yeah, Suzanne is... It's kind of, she's kind of bitchy. Uh, I don't really like the character that much. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's understandable why she's upset. I, I get it, I totally get it. And John is, is entirely responsible for everything that happened. And he does deserve uh, to be treated in a certain way, but that's just, just kind of pushing it a bit too far. But overall, the actress that played their daughter in the movie that was blind, I thought she was just remarkable. I thought she really did pull off a blind person very well. As far as the gore, I thought the gore, the practical effects were done incredibly well, I think. Everything else about this movie I thought was enjoyable and 
uh, Gordon really did nail it uh, with the practical effect. So yeah, so I'm gonna give Castle Freak a B minus. It's not too bad. It's definitely not one of uh, Gordon's best movies, but it is a movie worth checking out, uh, especially during Halloween. I recommend it for sure. And uh, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't take me 50 something years to finish this review, but uh, yeah, I finally got to it and I finished it off for you guys and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and that footage you saw earlier was, was done on Halloween of 2018. So um, if you are wondering like why that footage was old, that's why. Uh, finally finished it now. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I will have more reviews coming and more videos coming. So look forward to that. And I will be sure to read all your comments. I never leave you guys hanging. You guys all know that already. So let me know what you guys thought of Castle Freak. I would love to know. It's a good movie, not too bad. There were some aspects of the movie that could have been a little bit better. Yeah, but overall, I thought uh, Gordon did a pretty decent job with it. So yeah, that's it. Until next time, everybody, take it easy, guys, and take care, everyone.